Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elena Patimova, and I work for SGF. Um, thanks a lot for joining us today. We're going to cover a very interesting topic on generating alpha through commodities arbitrage strategies, and I'm joined here by trading technologist and CN first. I will start with the disclaimer. Uh, basically, presentation is only for educational purposes, and none of the information provided would be taken as uh, trading or investment advice. We'll move into the first slide, basically outlining the different exchanges that are offering access to commodities markets that could be arbitrage uh, onshore versus offshore China. And you can uh, see that uh, these are the four main commodities, brand, iron ore, rubber, and copper. Two of these commodities are listed on SGX iron ore and rubber, and we will talk about them in more detail. Let's start from iron ore, and I would like to outline the main um, specifics and contract specifications for iron ore listed on SGX. SGX contract is US dollar denominated. It's cash settled against monthly average, daily average of index prices. Uh, it's important to mention that that is the pricing mechanism that is aligned with the physical market. We have quite a diverse institutional uh, market participants. In fact, 99% of our volumes are coming from institutional and physical players, whilst on DCE, over 90% of participation uh, is coming from retail flow. The liquidity is spread across the contract month, and the trading can be in monthly, quarterly, or in calendar years. We're offering significant margin offsets against other um, commodity contracts listed on SGS as well as against other financial contracts. The contract has been um, listed in 2015 and on-screen liquidity picked up a little bit later. Today, we're looking at the total um, daily average volume of around 100,000 plots with 20% of the volume um, coming from on-screen activity. On the bottom chart, you can see the breakdown of um, activity between T and T plus one sessions, basically um, daytime in Asia versus overnight in Asia uh, or daytime in uh, US and Europe. Today, around 20 to 25% of our total activity is happening in T plus one sessions, which is quite important for uh, our time zone. Now let's talk about spread activity. So the second month on SGX, uh, which is the blue line here, is the most active uh, month. If we're looking at the spread, then the uh, total spread accounts to 20% of our total futures volume. And on screen, uh, around 50% of the volumes is actually executed in spreads. The most actively traded spread will be second to third months, 18% of on-screen activity, followed by third to fourth month, around 6% of all on-screen activity. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the chart showing the breakdown of liquidity um, uh, throughout the curve. And um, uh, SGX uh, RNO market is a very typical commodity market, very similar to oil or base metals, whereas the majority of liquidity is concentrated in front of the curve. Again, it's very or slightly different to uh, DCE, where um, uh, volumes are mostly concentrated in two months, January and September, and occasionally in May. Now let's talk about arbitrage specifically. So first, I would like to I would like you to look at the breakdown of liquidity on SGX throughout the trading session. We are offering 21 and a half hours of active um, trading between 8 a.m. and 12 a.m. Uh, Singapore time. Uh, you can see there are two active green sessions, which we call China hours. So these are coinciding with um, China Open. But we also have a very active trading between 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Singapore time, uh, which are non-China hours, and we're still seeing quite a lot of activity happening in these um, uh, trading hours. T plus one session, interestingly, um, have account accounted for quite a lot of volumes um, 
in, throughout the COVID-19 crisis when China actually closed their night session. Now, at the bottom of the page, you can see three charts looking at the actual spread and correlation analysis between SGX and BCE RNO mark. These two markets are 96% correlated. Um, the arbitrage is mainly coming from the uh, fact that there are different uh, port charges, taxes, and the contracts being listed in um, different currencies. Uh, the actual spread um, is this middle chart, and you can see it could be quite volatile. Normally, SGX would trade with the premium to DC. However, occasionally, this relationship is uh, being broken down. Now, I would like to mention uh, options very briefly. We launched them in September 2012, while DC uh, launched their options at the end of last year. Uh, our options are accounting for 20% of the total RNO volumes traded, and the market structure is very similar to the futures market structure. So the liquidity is concentrated in the front of the curve, with the second month being the most active month. Most of the activity in our options are traded as NLT, which stands for negotiated large, large trade, basically block trades. And this pie chart at the bottom is very interesting breakdown of who is trading SGX options, which is mainly banks and brokerage firms, as well as international trading houses. And finally, on RNOR, I would like to um, outline the importance of RNOR as a macroeconomic commodity. So this chart at the top uh, is basically showing the, uh, the fact that iron ore fell in line with other major global commodities at the end of January, which is here. But then it more looks like a correction because the price is very much stabilized, whilst commodities like oil and copper continue to fall with oil hitting negative prices. So iron ore is one of the commodity that is critical to the Chinese economy and is highly correlated to key Chinese economic indicators. So let's talk very briefly about rubber because that's not necessarily the focus of today's session. There are two main types of rubber, uh, TSR20, which is block rubber, and that accounts for over 95% of SGX volume. That is the dark blue line here on the chart at the top. And there's another rubber contract called um, RSS3, which is uh, a different shape. Um, I would like to mention that uh, TSR20 is the type of rubber that is used by over 75% of the uh, tire producers. So that is the global price benchmark uh, for uh, rubber. We are seen by diverse participation of physical and financial users uh, in our market. Over 95% of activity is happening on screen, so there are no block trades. Everything is electronic, everything you can see, everything is on screen, with liquidity concentrated in the third delivery month. We want to avoid front for sure, because it's a physically deliverable contract. There is only T session in rubber contract. There is no T plus one. However, that is something that we are currently looking at. And today, SGX is holding over 60% of market share in volumes and over 80% of market share in open interest. On the next slide, you can see the order book uh, with uh, very tight bid ask spread of two ticks and uh, over 100 lots. Uh, market depth, both on uh, bid and ask side. And also you can see the breakdown of liquidity by tenor in front months, months two to three, four to six, and over six months. Uh, basically showing to you that there's plenty of activity happening in the curve and the contract could be traded as outright, calendar spreads or spreads related strategies. In terms of the arbitrage against IME contracts, um, this ARP is mainly driven by three factors. Firstly, it's a region. So our contract is Thai, Malaysia, and Indonesia, while uh, um, IME is these three regions plus China. The different delivery types, our contract is FOB, while IME is warehouse delivery, and the currency, USD on SGX versus RMB on um, uh, China. I already spoke about different trading hours. 
The correlation between two contracts is uh, over 80%, with INE trading with um, 7.5 uh, cents US dollar cents premium to SGX. The spread was quite volatile around Chinese holidays, however, it um, corrected itself uh, uh, after that. Finally, at the bottom, I would like to show to you the increased participation from the um, Chinese uh, um, uh, market participants, that is the bright green line here. Today, um, China is introducing 17% of the volume uh, uh, on SGX rubber contract, which suggests to us that uh, quite a bit of this uh, liquidity is coming from arbitrage between two markets. On this note, I'll share my uh, email address for anyone who has specific questions and wants to reach out to me. And I would like to pass the microphone to Richard Brown from CN First, who is going to talk about specifics of trading uh, iron ore arbitrage. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you, Elena. I'm Richard Brown, and I'm with CN First International Futures Limited. I'm going to be looking at generating alpha through geographical arbitrage in commodities by looking at the iron ore contract, which trades on the SGX, as well as in China on the DCE, the Dalian Commodity Exchange. Just a quick disclaimer. This discussion is for educational purposes only, and it does not constitute trading or investment advice. Geographic arbitrage. Quite simply, it's simultaneously trading a contract on one exchange against a correlated contract on another exchange in obviously a different geographic location, similar to any relative arm spread. The iron ore represents a pure arbitrage with low risk appetite and is a good example for us to look at today. All right, to begin with, let's look at where to trade on the curve. You need to ensure there's sufficient volume and depth in both contracts. And on the SGX, volume is concentrated in the second and third calendar months. Currently, the front month is June. Therefore, we should be looking at July and August as they have the largest volume. The DCE, the volume is spread down the curve, but there's sufficient liquidity in July and August. So currently, the best price discovery and correlation would be to look at July versus July and or August versus August. You should avoid trading in the front month as they have different expiry dates and different types of settlements. The DCE is physical delivery and the SGX is cash settled. In terms of the ratio, trading and charting are both one to one as both contracts are 100 metric tons and they are both iron ore at 62%. You do need to normalize the currency and the DCE trades in CNY and the SGX US dollars. The convention is to convert DCE prices to US dollars. To do that, you use the TT order spreader functionality, which includes currency conversion and creates a synthetic contract normalized and priced in US dollars, which Matt will review later. Once created, you can use the synthetic contract for trading and analysis with a common denominator. You will now be comparing apples with apples. The TTMD trader, as we know the latter, as well as the TT charts for your new synthetic spread will all be in US dollars. You've got to be aware of the daily price limits on the DCE, which are minimum and maximum price changes on the day. Market remains open, but won't trade through the daily limit. And the daily price limits will reset on the evening session, as that's considered the start of the next day by the exchange. The SGX on the other hand does not have any daily limits or circuit breakers, regardless of trading range. Be aware that the PL may be material and it can also be a little bit scary whilst the DCE leg is locked limit. The expectation is DCE will play catch up on subsequent day or days, depending on the magnitude of the move. This is assuming, of course, no major changes in costs such as FX. These are the trading hours in Singapore and China. As you can see, and as Elena mentioned earlier, the SGX pretty much trades for 21 and a half hours, starting at 7.25 in the morning. The DCE, on the other hand, is only open from 9 in the morning until 2.30 a.m., with three distinct sessions in the morning and one distinct session early evening. You can look for alpha when the SGX is continuously trading and we have opens and closes on the DCE. 
a couple of opportunities could be found in looking at the different types of orders, such as market on open and market on close, the netting period of four minutes pre-open for the DCE night session, and take into consideration that some traders do not have the mandate for overnight positions, giving away the bid offer spread to exit positions near or around the close. These are the trading hours in London, and the only thing to note is that the final morning session, or their final day session, and their evening session are during the conventional trading day for the UK and Europe. There's definitely two different types of participants on the different exchanges. The DCE is dominated by traders with short time horizons, 70% of which are retail and very sensitive to short-term price fluctuations and quick to exit for profit or loss. They've got a tendency to overreact to news and events, and they're very sensitive and reactive to white noise. The SGX, on the other hand, is weighted to industry professionals, such as steel companies, miners, bankers, and they make up 90% of the volume. They have longer time horizons. They focus on goals such as hedging, and they're not nearly as price sensitive. A good example of the different participants would be the relationship of open interest versus average daily volume. On the SGX, open interest is eight times average daily volume, and they trade about 100,000 lots a day. On the DCE, its open interest is less than one times average daily volume, and they trade over a million lots per day. Pretty good indicator that the DCE traders are jobbing in and out all day, and the SGX is building and managing positions. The chart below is the synthetic spread created in TT, and it's the correlation, and it, sh and it shows that the correlation stays within parameters over time, but it does have revaluations. As you can see, the range starts at minus two to eight, until about 2018, and then it moves into a range between $3 and $13 onwards. The relationship does break down, as you can see in 2019, and you need to be vigilant with stops and patient for the correlation to revalue and determine your new parameters. Mean reversion trades can be explored for short, sometimes even intraday, and longer, maybe one day to a week or weeks, this chart below is for the May 20 contract for a short six week period from March 2nd until uh, April 17th. So it's a very uh, volatile period. The green line is daily closing price using the left axis and it has a range of eight to $14. The gray line using the right axis is the daily range and that goes from one to $4. These tight ranges give confidence to hold your positions including overnight or for a day or even weeks, and not get spooked by white noise. You can work the spread and wait for your levels without chasing the market. Like any strategy, have your entry, exit, and stop, perhaps most importantly your stop, calculated pre-execution. You've got to trade the relationship. The strategy is all about trading the relationship, i.e. your synthetic spread, and not the individual legs. You've got to trust the order spreader to work your buy and sell parameters that your analysis has meticulously determined. Breakouts will occur when the relationship breaks down or revalues. Take a stop if required, and then look for new relationships to formulate and then recalculate your trading parameters. When recalculating, consider fundamental changes in costs such as FX. Cap risk, when you look at the relationship, the gap risk will be mitigated because the relationship should hold up even on really big moves. Beware of DCE daily limits and careful not to trade on the open if you think that they might be in lock limit. Assuming they're not in lock limit, it can, it can be a good opportunity if prices are temporarily trading out of line on a fast market and on a crazy open. A good example would be March 8th, the Sunday night WTI, they opened up about 25% down. You do have currency risk, which needs to be managed. Uh, the DCE will require margin in CNY for intraday as well as overnight. Your account needs to be funded with the local currency to carry positions and work orders during the day. For example, you have a spread and the outrights move materially. The US dollar leg is profitable and the CNY is losing, less in US dollar terms, so the spread is still profitable. 
if the move is material, you may need to move funds from US dollar to CNY to satisfy the exchange margin requirements intraday. Also be aware that if the FX rate moves materially, it's going to have an impact on the pricing of the spread. All right, below is how to set up the auto spreader. Now I'm going to pass you over to Matt to discuss TT functionality, especially the auto spreader. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Garley, and I work for Trading Technologies, so known as TT. Another small disclaimer. This presentation represents TT confidential information and is not to be disseminated. The trading strategies and commentary in this presentation are presented merely as examples and should not be considered trading advice, nor is this presentation designed to provide any legal, tax, regulatory advice to you. Trading strategies, legal, regulatory, and tax compliance are all your responsibility. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with trading technologies, we are an independent software vendor providing to exchange connectivity to over 50 of the world's derivatives, crypto, bond markets, as well as more recently, private liquidity pools. Our ecosystem is supported by over a dozen co-located or proximity hosted data centers connected by the fastest commercially available lines. In this ecosystem, we support a number of products, including, but not limited to, TT and TT Pro front ends, incorporating TT Aggregator, TT Algo Design Lab, ADL, TT Auto Spreader, and TT OMS. We also deploy TT Score, our market surveillance special platform, and we have our proprietary TT SDKs and TT Fix. Trading technologies also offer infrastructure as a service hosting. For more information about any of these products, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Today is also a spread up we are, we are most interested in, uh, and more specifically, we're focusing on the um, Dalian SGX Iron or R. The TT Auto Spreader can actually connect to over 50 contracts across all of our supported exchanges. So what is Auto Spreader? Well, I'll move over to my TT screen. We can see, also we can use Auto Spreader to create and trade our own synthetic calendar and inter-product or inter-exchange spreads. Auto Spreader calculates a synthetic spread using user-defined parameters in each of the outright legs. Once your order is placed into the spread, Auto Spreader will quote orders on one or more of the outright products within that synthetic contract. So to configure my Auto Spreader, I open the Auto Spreader widget, which is found in automation. Here you can see I have a, a list of pre-configured Auto Spreaders, but today it is uh, the iron ore um, are we are most interested in. So if I hit the edit button, you can see how I configured this spread. The auto spreader configuration box provides us with the parameters and settings to configure a synthetic spread and control its behavior as it trades. Within this configuration, I have listed SGX on all as leg one, leg two, is Dalian Iron Ore via CN First. I've chosen to lead and quote at the SGX leg, and as such, I will choose to deploy from the co located DT Auto Spreader server at SGX. And as Richard mentioned, we are dealing with two different currencies here. We want to factor in the exchange rate. I've done so by adding the UC contract, which is US dollar CNY on SGX, and this is for reference and logic only, we will not trade into this product. We will be using a custom formula. You can see here we have pre-coded formulas, price differential, ratio, net change. I will select the custom. And this enables us, allows us to incorporate the market data from the UC contract, therefore converting a spread into US dollars. To do this, we enter the following formula. 
is like one, uh, sorry, one times like two merge price divided by one times like three merge price minus one times like one merge price. And um, incidentally, that's, uh, that's created by using IntelliSense. As Richard mentions, it's better to trade out of the front, outside of the front bump, we have selective July expiries. And as we are told, this is a pure R, the ratios, uh, the quantity ratios and the multipliers, the pricing multipliers are both one to one. If you're trading contracts with different underlying products or anything like that, we could factor that into, take that into account here. We have enabled hedging on both the R and R products as these are the trades we want to, uh, sorry, these are the products we want to execute into. Currency is left unchecked as we are not going to trade into this product. Once I have saved my offices for the configuration, I can launch in a number of different ways. We can launch for MD trade with legs, for example, market grid, spread matrix, I have launched in MD Trader with each leg. Here we can see the synthetic spot for product and the um, two outright R and R contracts we will be trading into, and then the currency leg will be using for reference. If I enter an order on my synthetic synthetic spread, you will immediately see my order placed in the SGX leg. On our leg. Once that is filled, it will immediately send its hedge leg into the Dalian by XCN first, as we established in our configuration. We have a whole host of additional parameters, and we don't have time to go into those today. But I would like to give you a quick glance of auto spreader rules, again found in automation. You can use auto spreader rules to customize the logic for your auto spreader at three stages of the life cycle of the spread. We have pre coded TT rules, or we can create our own. As I say, three stages of the life cycle of the spread can be managed. We have quote in order, pre hedge order, the post hedge order, which manages um, the hedge order that was not immediately filled. We can add many. Uh, or single rules to, to any of our spreads. So this was just a high level overview of auto, of auto spreader and a specific spread. Uh, I will be sending out videos and documentation resources with more detail. I would welcome the opportunity to speak with, one, with you one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions or would like to take a closer look. I will now hand you back to Richard who will give an overview of CM First, one of CT's connected partners. Thank you, over to you, Richard. Thanks, Matt. This is Richard Brown again. Let's look at trading access to China international commodities market. Just a quick history, until March 2018, it was required to be on mainland China to trade the Chinese futures exchanges, with few exceptions. The regulation changed, and now certain contracts are designated international and open to traders offshore. Why trade on the Chinese markets? Well, most offshore professional traders are absent, so there's a lot less competition. Chinese retail traders make up 70% of the volume, and high-frequency traders make up less than 10% of the volume. Chinese officials have decided to give HFT influence to a minimum and have rules throttle messaging, such as if you cancel refresh 500 times in a day, you'll be excluded from the exchange for the remainder of the day. This is a clear barrier HFT. You could open an account the traditional way, i.e. go direct to a prime broker in China. This will pose two sets of problems, one logistical and two market access. Let's look at the logistical problems first. For many reasons, having a direct relationship in China with a prime broker and qualifying for a non-resident account with a local bank, an NRA, is, a full, is full of material problems for most offshore trading firms. From language barriers on statements and correspondence to the account setup itself, KYC and AML documentation, and just general communication. 
You also have regulatory reporting requirements. And of course, you'll have to deal with the regulation of moving funds across the Chinese border. Let's look at some of our solutions. CNF is regulated by the Hong Kong authorities with a type two license and an overseas intermediary member of all three exchanges in China. You'll open your account in Hong Kong direct with CNF. All contract statements and correspondence can be in English and CNF can fulfill your regulatory reporting on behalf of our customers. We provide genuine DMA to Chinese exchanges without the need for OTC contracts. Funds stay in Hong Kong under the Securities and Futures Commission's Clients Money Regulation, and CNF will facilitate the NRA bank requirements, meaning customers don't have a requirement to open up a Chinese bank account. There's a 24-hour trade support and trade execution team that can communicate in English. Now let's look at the market access problems. You'll have to source the following. A web-based order management system. You need to su subscribe to live data. And you'll need an application for pre-trade risk and initial order entry through to risk and position management. Let's look at some of the solutions. To overcome market access hurdles, we have two important partnerships. First, with WebStock information systems that can provide data on the Chinese exchanges. Unlike the majority of global exchanges, real-time data for the Chinese exchanges is not readily available. WebStock also happens to be a major shareholder of CNF, and therefore our interests in providing the best solutions are aligned. It is this unique partnership that is the main ingredient in how CNF can offer genuine DMA. Thanks to WebStock's input, CNF can offer level two real-time pricing, meaning we have a depth of five best bids and offers for the trading ladder. Difficult to get level two, and most only have level one, which is best bid and offer. The customer signs a market access agreement, which allows CNF to provide data for all Chinese exchanges. Like all exchange data, it comes at a cost. The charges are 150 US dollars per user per month for all three exchanges. CNF can provide six months tick data for free to our TT customers, and additional data is available for a small fee. With the help of WebStock, we're able to accommodate our second big partnership, which is with Trading Technologies. Thanks to provision of real-time data from WebStock, CNF has provided TT with the resources to write connectivity to all three Chinese exchanges. Thanks to our exclusive partnership with TT, we can provide genuine DMA to China for all of our customers. Traders will have seamless access from trading desk to the exchange via the TT and CNF infrastructure. Both the trader and risk experience when trading in China is the same as traders have come to appreciate when trading on global exchanges with TT. Also, it's pretty important to note the functionality in TT is also available when connecting to the Chinese exchanges. That's a big advantage over the Chinese retail traders that are trying to compete in these markets with a lot less resources. <clears throat> Within the TT environment, you'll receive real-time data and have a complete order management system from order entry to risk and position management. Thanks to our corporate structure in Hong Kong and our partnerships with WebStock and TT, CNF have managed to clear the hurdles and open the door for seamlessly trading in China. Now let's look at the actual contracts that are available. On the Shanghai International Energy Exchange, the INA, you have crude oil, that's about 284,000 lots a day, and the deliverable is highly correlated to ICE Brent, so there's a good ARB opportunity. The INA also lists TSR20 rubber, which has about 8,000 lots a day. It's a growing contract, but has potential for arbitrage against the SGX and Tilcom rubber contracts. The Dalian Commodity Exchange, the DCE, has iron ore, as we discussed earlier. It does about a million lots a day, and there's a good geographic ore opportunity earlier discussed. The Zhenjiao Commodity Exchange, the ZCE, has purified terephthalatic acid, more commonly known as PTA, and part of my pronunciation, I'm sure that's not correct. Um, they do a little over a million lots a day as well. And for those that aren't familiar with PTA, it's a downstream product of a barrel of crude oil. And not surprisingly, PTA and crude oil, the prices are highly correlated. 
Just as an aside, PTA is used in a variety of end products, but polyesters and plastics, the plastics used for things like water bottles, are two of the most important. I think that the PTA contract could be the best kept secret of the Chinese contracts and certainly worth exploring. In addition to these contracts, the Shanghai Futures Exchange has announced that copper will be available in the second quarter of this year. Of course, that's been delayed thanks to COVID, but copper, when it does get listed as designated uh, for international trading, will be an excellent welcome as the third leg to the COMEX LME copper org. INE has unexpectedly announced that they are listing a new contract, low sulfur fuel oil, and this will designate it international from day one <clears throat> and could be available within a month or so. In addition to the Chinese international contracts, DNF can also offer access to other prominent global exchanges, as you can see listed on the screen now. Account open with CNF is pretty straightforward. The customer will open an account directly with CNF in Hong Kong. Your margin capital is placed directly with CNF in the currency of your choice. And CNF is your risk counterparty. Documentation is standard and available in English. You fill in a standard account opening document, which is comprehensive, but not particularly overbearing. And to enable CNF to provide data, you'll also sign a market access agreement. And of course, you'll be asked to provide standard KYC and anti-money laundering documents. The legal relationship is equally straightforward. The customer will face CNF as per normal client broker relationship, and CNF will face the exchanges as an overseas intermediary member. CNF will cover the financial obligation to the exchange, including margin and ultimate loss. CNF will also provide connections and IT infrastructure to the exchanges and will facilitate the regulatory obligations. Just to wrap things up, the Chinese exchanges are still relatively young with material retail participation. Access is still a hurdle for offshore professional traders, coupled with the fact that the regulators have an appetite to reduce the influence of HFT, there should be a lot less competition for alpha. CNF also mitigates the need to transfer funds to mainland China and covers your regulatory requirements. CNF is uniquely placed to overcome the barriers of entry and provide genuine DMA thanks to our Hong Kong jurisdiction and partnerships with Webstock and TT. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions or would like to discuss further, please contact me directly. I think we're now ready for the Q&A. Thank you, okay, thank you very much, uh, Matt, Richard. Um, and apologies, everyone, for the um, for a slight delay at the beginning. We had a technical issue, but um, we're happy to move on, uh, on to Q&A now. And you should have a Q&A window, so feel free to pop in your questions and we'll try to answer as many as possible. But if not, we'll take it offline. So we have a couple of questions um, and the first question will be for Richard. Um, can, um, can I use more than one clearer um, when I trade uh, Chinese markets? Richard? Uh, yeah, absolutely no problem. You can trade uh, with us for your Chinese, and I also suggest with your Chinese-related trade. So, for instance, if you're doing the iron ore R, you do both legs with CNF, but you can certainly carry on trading with your prime broker for the rest of your trades. Absolutely no problem. Okay, thank you, Richard. And uh, Matt, next question is for you. Um, the question is, um, why... Um, would traders be interested in this specific um, ARP strategy that we discussed today? Well, I, I know our customers are partners, prospective clients have been interested in China for some time now. So getting access to these markets has really been a game changer. Uh, they appear to be relatively untapped markets from an international perspective, heavily retail weighted and sentiment driven. So a professional trader stepping in with access to TT's, access to these markets with TT's tools, um, such as auto spreader, et cetera, and the ability to hedge against SGX has, has really um, you know, opened up opportunities to, to many of the professional traders in, in our part of the world. 
Thank you, Matt. Uh, Richard, we have another question for you, uh, which is in which currency would one need to hold the uh, hold money with um, CN first when they trade uh, this strategy? Um, when you're trading on the Chinese markets, unlike the mature Western markets, in China, you need to hold the local currency every time you trade. So you need to hold the money in CNY. And what we suggest is you transfer your dollars or pounds or whatever currency you'd like to deposit with CNF, transfer it and we'll do the FX for you at a good rate um, into CNY. If you don't want the exposure to the Chinese currency, then what I suggest you do is use the SGX FX contract and you can hedge it out. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, there's one question for me, which is, um, uh, which other SGX contracts could be ARPed or traded as a relative value strategy? Um, good question. We have a number of contracts that are heavily correlated between each other. So, for example, Nikkei to um, Simski, Singapore, um, MSCI Singapore, or A50 to MSCI Singapore, um, or Nifty 50 to MSCI Singapore, all um, uh, between 70 to 90 percent correlated with um, quite high um, R squared numbers. So all three strategies will be possible for trading as a relative value. In addition to this, we just recently launched a series of single stock uh, Singapore single stock futures uh, as a response to the market demand in are between um, MSCI Singapore uh, index contract um, uh, against um, the constituencies of this. So again, very heavily um, correlated. And um, this um, bank, um, Singapore uh, single stock futures uh, bank basket could be traded against um, Simski. And we run some back testing, for example, for last two weeks of May and beginning of June. Uh, this uh, long short strategy could be traded with the gross profit of 26 index points. Um, another question for Richard. What is, uh, you mentioned the OI on uh, DCE. What is the actual OI number? Um, it's about 900 to a million on average. All right. But it's usually always a little bit less than the ADV. Um, another one for you, Richard. Are offshore clients allowed to participate in China grains market? In crude market, is curve spreads active or just front outright? Uh, let's start with the grains. Um, currently, the grains are not available. Um, in time, we fully expect that all of the futures markets will become uh, designated as international. Only the markets that have been designated as international are available to trade from offshore. And currently, that's just the crude oil, the iron ore, the rubber, the low sulfur um, um, fuel oil. Um, we expect all 50 at some point to come on to uh, be designated as international. As far as the um, oil goes, um, there's not really a curve trade in it just yet. I would say at least 80 plus percent is in the most active front month uh, on the Chinese market, which is usually the second month. Okay, thank you, Richard. There's a question about three lakhs of the ARP. I'm not quite understanding the question, but um, can you talk a little bit about the FX lag uh, in this ARP, please? The FX, the FX lag in the, in the actual, the, the possibility of hedging it. All oh, right, okay. Um, uh, it depends on how you're running it. The actual FX, um, when you're running the trade, um, as Matt spoke about, you can actually put in a third leg so you normalize it, and you're constantly looking at the spread in real time in terms of the FX based on the front month um, futures contract on SGX. Um, it shouldn't make that big a difference uh, unless there's a big move in the currency, but you'll have that with any geographical ARB in two different currencies. Perfect. Um, okay. I think these are all the questions that we had. I don't see anything else coming in, so uh, we're actually running out of time anyway. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We had quite a good attendance, and apologies again for the delay at the beginning. And um, we hope to hear you again in the next webinar that we'll organize. Thank you very much, everyone.